All right, we'll follow our familiar order. We'll take an opening statement from coach, followed by questions for student athletes. When those are exhausted, we'll go ahead and d dismiss the student athletes and return to questions for coach. And we'll remind you to please raise your hand when you have a question. We'll get a mic holder to you. And if you can direct questions specifically to student athletes, that would be helpful. Coach, an opening statement. I can't say enough about our guys just fought and battled. I felt like we had a shot. I didn't think we were going to win it like that, but I, I really felt like we were going to win this game. I, I liked our guard play. I said it from the day one. You know, we felt like maybe we got bad seed. We thought we were better than that. But then I told the guys, like, after the initial, like, we're trying to get to the second weekend. Like, whether you beat a five as a 12, you know, I didn't know that we were going to get higher than a 12 or, and then a four and or a four first and a five. Like, let's just go give what they gave us and get it done. And then the more you looked at them, the more beatable they looked because they weren't that deep. We play fast. We had great guard play. I thought we could guard their guards. They had one ball handler. I thought we could do a pretty good job. So, and I mean, they've been through a lot of controversy. I thought they've done an unbelievable job. They won eight out of their last nine. The only one they lost was when Trier didn't play and Coach Miller wasn't coaching. So they, they've been rolling. I just didn't think the more, I mean, I watched enough Pac-12 games to last myself for about five years. But they, they just, nobody puts any kind of ball pressure on them. So I, I, we've got two of the best defensive guards in the country, and Carruthers and Jordan. I thought they'd come out and pressure them. Let's see if they can get the ball to the two seven-footers with uh, the guards having to handle pressure all night. And, you know, they got it to them enough, but not, not enough to beat us. So, I mean, if you look, I mean, Aiton had 14, and Ristic had 16, and they, I mean, they were 312th in the country in percentage of points coming from three, so we wanted to make them shoot a lot of threes. We were fortunate that they shot two for 18, and some of that was due to us, and some of that was they just missed. So, you know, that, that's a, a great program that Sean's built, unbelievable program. So to get a win over a program like Arizona, that, that just speaks volumes to our guys. And I, I mean, Wes and Jeremy kind of carried us through the MAC tournament. This, by the way, this is the third team uh, all MAC selection. I don't know if supposedly there was five better point guards in the MAC than him. So, I, I, the other coaches, I guess, didn't want to give him a. First team, and, and Jeremy's a second team All Mac guy. So apparently, there's five players better than him in the Mac. And then CJ was first team. CJ struggled a little bit in the Mac tournament. I told him uh, this afternoon, like CJ, it's statistically impossible for you to have another bad game because you're too good of a player. So like you're gonna get this thing rolling tonight. He came out, hit a big three right out of the gate. Jeremy and West got going right away, and shoot, I uh, felt good right after that. And we, we had to shore some defensive stuff up, but and get the turnovers down once we got that taken care of, I, I felt pretty good with it. I felt great at halftime. Like we, I mean, if you look, we had nine turnovers at the half. I told them if we quit turning the ball over, we'd be up 10 right now. We quit turning the ball over, we only had one in the second half, and we, we got a pretty good win. All right, let's direct questions to Wes Clark, Jeremy Harris, and C.J. Massinger. Start with you. Uh, I guess. This is for all three. I'll, I'll ask you, Wes. I mean, did you, you guys obviously were confident, but did you feel a little bit like people didn't understand how good this team really was? Um, definitely. You know, with us being a MAC team, it's, it's easy to look at us as, you know, uh, a team that can't compete with a high major or a team that got, you know, four or four NBA prospects that we wouldn't be able to compete. But we know deep down we watched enough film looked at things and, you know, got our confidence right overnight, you know, that we, we could play with these guys and came out and played hard. A uh, question for you, Jeremy. I mean, you got you, it was very back and forth in that first half, but you guys just took over in the second half. I think a 26 run I counted. I mean, what were you guys just doing during that run to just really get some separation from them? Um, I have to get a credit to our coaches because they gave us a great scouting report and we just – Followed it for the most part and just did what we've been doing all year. We I don't think much changed in this game. And that's it. This is for all three of you. You guys came out shooting uh, incredibly in the second half, shot 64.3% from uh, three-point. How do you explain how you shoot that well from three-point? Wes, uh, let's start with you. Uh, I think it's 
it's simple, man. You just making shots no matter who's out there. You know, if we can get the same open looks as we take in the MAC, it's the same kind of shot. It's still a basketball rim. It's still, what, 23 feet, 18 feet? Is it 18 feet? <laughs> It's 19.9, I believe. 19, uh, 20, 20 feet, just right, round 20. it off. <laughs> it's the same 20 foot three point line. So, you know, we just try to have that same confidence and then worry about exactly who was on the defensive end. Jeremy? Um, I mean, we've been putting in work all year. Times after practice, we, we always stand after, after practice, before practice, late at night, just shooting, getting up shots. I mean, this week, since we've been here, we've been in the gym late at night. We had to shoot around this morning. Just getting up, same shots we've been shooting all year, like Wes said. CJ, uh, uh, the reason why we shot so well, it just it just uh, shows what type of uh, what type of program we have and what type of guys and coaches staff we have in our uh, program. Uh, we're very uh, hardworking guys, you know. Uh, ever since we've been here, we got here early just to um, get in the gym more, uh, get up more shots, get used to the altitude and stuff like that. Uh, we just been staying at it. Um, as soon as we got off the plane, went to the hotel, went to go get shots. Uh, we just we just stayed with it, and you just keep pounding the stone. It's eventually gone. We'll watch. Okay, for the three uh, as well. Um, welcome to the NCAA tournament. Um, as we, when you started, you had a small section of Buffalo fans, small section of Arizona fans, and then as it started picking up in the second half, you had about ten thousand fans rooting for Buffalo. So just talk about what that felt like and how that motivated you guys. CJ, let's start with you. Oh, man, it felt amazing. Uh, like, I noticed it at first. When we first got there, uh, we made a couple shots. Uh, we, we heard our Buffalo fans. And then at the end of the game, we went on a run and started making shots. The whole arena started erupting. It, it, felt, it felt amazing. So I guess with the uh, handsome comment that uh, Wes Clark made, I guess they thought we was handsome. <laughs> and they got behind us. Jeremy. Oh uh, yeah, the same thing CJ said. We had a little section, and then by the end of the game, it seemed like we was in alumni arena in Buffalo. So, <laughs> Mr. Good Looking, <laughs> man, you know, it's the same. It's just the same feel, man. We just took it one play at a time, man. You know, everybody likes a nice, hardworking team, so we just uh, embrace that and try to play as hard as we can. Guys, one of the you – know, Greg Moore, Arizona Republic, good to meet you all. One of the things I noticed about your style of play was just really relentless. You knew exactly what you wanted to do, and you just stayed with it. Where do you get that? Because Arizona made a nice little comeback. I think they were down two uh, going into halftime, and they came right out after half. CJ, you hit a three, and then you guys – they went in a little bit, but then you guys just sort of took over from there. So where do you get the relentlessness from? Um, go ahead, bro. No, you got it. You got it? I got, oh, it. I got it. Right. Man, it's it just uh, – man. It comes to the man at the end of the table. Um, he's, he's a re relentless guy, you know. He, he has the utmost confidence in all of his players and uh, even the game plan, you know. Um, we just came in feeling like, you know, we we belong there. We belong at this stage, you know. We, we He's not scared of anything, and he puts that into, into us, and then we just follow his lead. Uh, he's a very relentless person. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Coach O is probably the most – competitive coach I ever played for and he let all his players just go out there and play their game you know if you're a three-point shooter he wants you to shoot threes every time if you're a driver drive it spray the ball out to the three-point shooters credit to uh, coach Oates we'll take two more questions for student athletes first right back here uh, Jeremy Jeff Mills with the Greensboro News and Record I remember you, I remember you Paige um, you guys busted a lot of brackets tonight How's that make y'all feel? Um, that's pretty amazing. I can't even sit up here and lie. <laughs> but um, yeah, we did bust a lot of brackets. Um, I, I mean, we us as a team, we kind of knew that we could play with them, so we went out there, executed the game plan. It happened. Last question. Heather Prusak, WGRZ TV, NBC in Buffalo. Uh, guys, this is for all of you. First, I'll start with CJ. CJ, you were here two years ago when this team lost. So what's it like to be a part of UB winning its first ever NCAA tournament game? And then for Jeremy and Wes, with this being your first ever NCAA tournament game, to be a part of that. CJ? Oh, man, it feels good. Um, yeah, like you said, we uh, came here two years ago. We felt that we um, – that we could have got that one. That one kind of came down to like the last four or five minutes. 
Uh, we just kind of carried over that experience. You know, uh, we did get up on Arizona, like, uh, maybe six or four, something like that. And we said we got to put our foot on the gas pedal, and we just carried that experience over to here. Jeremy? Um, me and Wes, Wes, my roommate, on this trip, we was talking late last night. I'm not going to tell you the time because Coach always might get mad. <laughs> but we couldn't, we couldn't sleep because we were so excited to play. And it, it, it's amazing. March Madness is amazing. Man, we just, man, we know about this. You know, this is a great opportunity for us. So, you know, we watch it on TV every year. So just for us to be in this, in this type of predicament was just a great opportunity. We just wanted to embrace it. We couldn't even sleep, like he said. We was up all night thinking about this game, watching film, and just going over what we had to do to get a W. All right, we'll congratulate the student athletes and dismiss them from the stage. And when they've left the stage, we'll go ahead and uh, turn it, it open to question for Co Appreciate Coach Oates. Congratulations, guys. Yeah. Go ahead. Turn the mic back on. Uh, uh, I seen that uh, President Barack, I mean, uh, ex-President Barack Obama, um, he uh, picked Arizona to beat us. And I just want to say, President Obama, I'm sorry, but I had to. <laughs> <laughs> Should have chose the handsome guys. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. We've got time for a few questions for Coach Oates. We'll start right here. Well, Coach, you mentioned it yesterday. Uh, did anyone go through a table and celebrating, or is anyone <laughs> planning on going <laughs> through a table? Or? Go search it on Twitter. I'm sure somebody has by now. <laughs> you, you be naked guy, maybe. Our, bi our, big, our big fan back in Buffalo probably went through a table. Coach John Huang, NOLA Media. I confess, I haven't really watched your team play a whole lot this year. Do they usually play with that amount of effort and intensity? And if so, how in the world did you lose eight games during the regular season? Well, uh, so it's a good, great question, really. So Wes Clark transferred from Missouri. We didn't get Wes eligible until second semester. So we lost five of them non-conference, three of them without him. And we also, we were down to seven scholarship players. So one of the guys that came in at the end, we had to pull off the football team, Dominic Johnson, because we just we didn't have enough players. So we, I mean, and we, it wasn't like we had bad losses. We lost to Cincinnati, South Dakota State, who everybody saw play here, who's a pretty good program. And then when we got West back, we were up one at Syracuse and ended up losing it, but that was his first game in 22 months. And then we had to fly to Texas A&M. It was like the travel day from hell. And, we, you know, we were still in that game with three minutes to go and lost that. So we, we didn't have bad losses. And we lost St. Bonaventure, who's playing, you know, to, were they, they were playing tonight. I don't know if they won or did they win or not. Oh, they lost. They, 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 yeah, but they, uh, they're, they're a pretty good team, too. So we didn't lose a bad team. And then we got in conference. Like, conference play sometimes, like, we had some injuries. Carruthers missed a month and a half with it with a stress fracture, and he's basically just been playing in games. So, I can't. We shot 11 to 26 at the free throw line in one game. I mean, that's hard to win doing that. But we do play that hard all the time. Like we've kind of given ourselves a blue collar mentality. We give out a hard hat after every game. Who we've got char charges are worth the most points. Floor dives, loose balls, deflections. We tally up the whole thing and give this hard hat out to whoever wins the blue collar points. We call them. So we I, we've tried to instill that. I, I think we were seventh in the country in scoring, but we score off our defense. So we keep preaching defense, defense, defense. It was pretty good tonight. We just have time for one more question right here. You talked yesterday about some of your ideas of how to uh, slow down DeAndre, DeAndre and, but talking about it and doing it are two completely different things. Are you s at all shocked of how well you guys were able to uh, slow him down and almost made him look uh, like a normal human being at points? No, because our bigs do a great job fronting and, and th their guards have never seen ball pressure like our guards uh, can do. So I, I look, He's really good, but you can take a big out of a game in college. Like, it's not that hard. There's no three seconds in the lane. You can pack a guy, sit right behind him the whole time. So you can do it. You can't take a guard out. Like, like you can't take Wes Clark out of the game. So the thing was, you know, if, if Trier got hot, Jackson Cartwright caught fire, we, we were going to be in trouble. We knew that they were going to have to miss some threes, but we knew we could take. It's not like we don't have guys with size. I mean, we've got 6'10", 6'8". You know, Jeremy's long. He guarded a seven-footer pretty well, but he's got length. So it may, I might be a tad surprised with how well it went, but no, you can. We've been t able to take bigs out all year with how we play that way. All right, thank you, Coach. Thanks.
All right, we'll take a quick opening statement from Coach, and then we'll turn it over to questions for Arizona student athletes. Coach? Well, we knew we had a very tough draw. Uh, we knew we were playing uh, an excellent basketball team and a team, quite frankly, that we didn't necessarily match up well with. Uh, we prepared hard, but we ran into a team that uh, played well on a night where we didn't. They certainly had a lot to do with that. But uh, it's difficult to exit the tournament the way we have because it uh, – it doesn't shed light on a lot of the great moments, uh, a lot of the things that especially these two guys have fought hard to establish uh, on, a, on a season that represented 27 wins in the Pac-12 tournament regular season championship. All that goes away when you, when you lose in the tournament, but in particular, losing the first round the way we did. Uh, it wasn't a lack of effort, certainly wasn't a lack of uh, wanting to advance. We got, we got beat, you know, we got beat by a good team a well-coached team, a team that was tough. And uh, the second half, we didn't play well in the first half to be down two. I think we felt like we had been in that situation many times, but they overwhelmed us in the second half. We, we struggled on offense and on defense, and uh, clearly all credit to, uh, to Buffalo. They did a great job. Let's take questions now for uh, Dusan Ristich and Parker Jackson Cartwright, please. Questions? Greg Moore, uh, Arizona Republic. You guys represent two of the winningest players that this program's ever had. Could you just take me through your emotions right now in what's got to be, you know, a particularly disappointing time? Dusan? Uh, like you said, it's it's a really disappointing uh, time for us. We we uh, didn't expect to end this tournament like this, uh, and you know, those wins that we won throughout our f last four years, like doesn't feel like that right now. It just it's so frustrating. It's something that we didn't expect. Like I said, Parker, um, it just doesn't really feel real right now. It's just just like Dusan said, disappointed that we had an indoor career like this and for our team just just disappointed um, but give them credit they played really well and um, they got the job done this question is for uh, Parker um, the Buffalo coach talked about uh, how part of his plan was to uh, try to pressure the guards and he felt that was an effective strategy did you notice uh, more pressure on you uh, like defensive pressure than most teams had played on you this year yeah, um, you know, they were physical from the start of the game. Um, it kind of got us out of rhythm, and we weren't in sync, particularly on offense. And I think they pressured not just myself, but all of our guards and made it tough on us. Uh, Parker, this is uh, for you as well. Can you just take me through your emotions in terms of the course and the journey you guys took this season, the ups, the, the downs, and for it to all come to an end tonight? We we endured a lot um, from the beginning, um, like when we t from when we went to the Bahamas, and um, you know people kind of wrote us off, and you know I thought we responded every time that happened, um, and you know we've been resilient all year and kind of just fought through everything and anybody just kind of write about us or try to tear us down, and you know we felt like coming into tonight we were playing our best basketball and kind of really clicking on all cylinders and. You know, for it to end like this is just really disappointing. Any more for student athletes? All right, thank you guys. We'll dismiss the student athletes from the stage, and once they've uh, left, we'll go ahead and turn it over to questions for Coach. Questions for Coach Miller. Hey, Sean. Um, DeAndre, just now said that the biggest thing that he got out of this season was a real appreciation from you for how hard he had to play game in and game out. He said that he really didn't think he understood what that represented until he came there. Could you talk a little about where he was versus very where he is in that regard? Yes, you know, um, you know, DeAndre 
superseded any expectation that that I could have ever had for him. Uh, he was an incredible teammate, worked hard every day, played for the win. You know, the way our team is made up, and, and we've fought all year with this, when you play two seven-footers, one of the two seven-footers has to do some extraordinary things on defense. And that's part of when I saw Buffalo play I knew it was going to be a tough draw for us because Harris is so good. And it's what they do every game. They exploit that matchup. But with DeAndre, uh, as, as fine of a kid as we've had and an extraordinary player, hate to see him go out in the first round. It's not his fault, really. He had 14 and 13. thought Buffalo really pressured us and took us out of some things. And, uh, and negated some of his some of the things that he's done all season long. But um, for anybody to not remember DeAndre as the greatest freshman to ever walk through Arizona, they didn't they weren't paying attention statistically and just the type of kid he is. He's uh, he's destined to go do some great things. And you know when you get someone like him, you wanna you wanna go all the way, right? And uh, when you lose in the first round, that's a tough pill to swallow. But uh, he, he was fantastic. He's uh, one of a kind. DeAndre Ana has looked superhuman at points this year, and I know you just mentioned that you knew it was going to be a tough draw because of how Buffalo plays, but were you surprised at how how well they were able to uh, slow him down? Yes, you know, I mean, e even him, he, he might not have had his A game, but I thought their pressure just dis – decimated us you know this 40 to 38 at the half and kind of the way our team played this entire season we, we've been more of a second half group than a first half and uh, a lot of times in that first four minutes of the second half we really get going the opposite happened tonight and that's to Buffalo's credit you know the stat sheet is is one that you don't oftentimes see in that uh, and they had two players have 20 made field goals and, you know, they were 15 of 30 from the three-point line. We were two for 18. You know, their guard play, their pressure defense, uh, you know, they, they, really, they really took it to us. You know, the other thing is when Perkins can make a couple threes in addition to what they already have, especially against us, that means their five and their four are making threes. And UCLA gave us problems with that. That was one of our losses. And, uh, you know, the way they utilize their bigs, I mean, they're, they're very difficult to defend, and yet at the same time, they play tremendous defense. They, they did a great job. They, they beat us hands down from start to finish. Sean, two years ago, uh, Wichita State kind of came out similarly to Buffalo. Um, besides losing in the first round, can you explain, like, maybe your emotions uh, just going through the course of the season and, and what you're feeling right now? This game f f felt... It feels a lot like Wichita. You know, Wichita, they had those guards, and uh, they pressured us. They were physical, obviously an excellent team. I think Buffalo, excellent team, physical, pressured us. And, uh, you know, both of our first-round exit, exits had that in common. Um, you know, in terms of my emotions, I'm, I'm not going to change it. Taking things a day at a time, obviously this is a, a tough day. And uh, we have to uh, move forward. You know, my, my thoughts are more with our players right now. It's not easy to win the Pac-12 tournament, win the regular season, overcome a lot, get here to the tournament finally, and not play well and, and get beat like we got beat. But that's part of sports. We have time for two more. We'll start back here. Sean, along those lines, how would you think this season will be remembered in, in, in two, three years from now? You know, I don't know. I don't know. We... Um, I can only go on what we've done. We're 27 and eight. We made the tournament. We, we got beat by, I think, a really good team. We didn't play well. They had a lot to do with it. You know, let me just say this. We worked hard to be ready for the game. Our guys practiced hard. You know, when you go three games and three days in a conference tournament, you know, you're a little bit banged up. So we tried to be smart in our approach. But, uh, but our intention was good. We just didn't have it tonight, and uh, and Buffalo deserves a lot of credit. Last question right here. 
Sean, there were long stretches tonight where DeAndre did not touch the ball, and it resembled, I know you weren't there, but I'm sure you watched it, uh, when they lost at Oregon. He might be the best player in the country. How do you guys not get him the ball for some possessions? Yeah, no, Buffalo did a great job. You know, they did. They pressured our guards. They took us out of a lot of things. You know, DeAndre in the first half had zero offensive rebounds, so that was part of the story. Obviously, he came alive in the second half. He had five, five offensive rebounds. But we as a group didn't get him the ball. But it wasn't like we didn't know that. I think sometimes you have to give the defense and the other team credit. They were able to pressure us at a level that hasn't happened very often. And DeAndre's averaged 20 and 10, 20 and 11. I think in the last uh, two, three weeks, he's probably closer to 26, 28 points, 15 rebounds. So we've established that we can get him the ball. Tonight, it wasn't as if we got away from him. It was that the other team did a great job. I'll use the analogy of, of a, a great wide receiver. If the pass rush and, and the blitzes and just continues to get to the quarterback, you know, that receiver is not going to get as many catches or opportunities. And tonight, in, in the basketball terms, their ball pressure taking us out of our ability to get him the ball. And uh, it, it certainly played to their advantage, and they deserve a lot of credit. Do you think there's a possibility that he has to get back to the He's frustrated because his career is ending. You know, he wanted to keep playing. All right. We'd remind you that Arizona's locker room is open. See U of A's athletic media relations staff. Thank you, Coach.